you have your Bibles, turn look up once again to the book of Galatians. Say, Amen. I heard that somebody say, Hey, go again. I heard that. In the spirit. Amen. Galatians chapter 6. Amen. One more time. Amen. Truly, once again, we give honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to all the saints of God. God bless you all. Thank you so much for making freedom your place of worship this morning. Amen. Also, I want to thank all of you that's watching by way of live streaming, by way of internet. Thank you. Welcome to Freedom World Outreach Ministries here in Greenwood, South Carolina, where everybody is somebody and Jesus is Lord. Amen. So we thank God for you joining us here. Amen. We pray that the services that you're watching every Sunday, the services that you hear are being a blessing to you and your family. Amen. Praise the Lord. Life changing. Amen. We're located here, 905, 25 bypass northeast here in Greenwood, South Carolina. And we are welcome to come by and visit us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God for that. Amen. Galatians chapter 6. And I want to be reading that verse number 7 for time's sake. It said, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. But he who sows to the flesh, to his flesh, will, will who sows to his flesh, will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit, will of the spirit reap life, everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. I want to use for the subject once again, part three, breaking the spirit of poverty, sowing and reaping. Breaking the spirit of poverty, part three, amen. If you don't mind, bow your head with a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we come now once again in the wonderful, mighty, and precious name of Jesus. Just to say we thank you, Father, for those at the sound of my voice. Thank you for another opportunity to stand up on the watch of all the time between the living and the dead to preach your holy, impregnated, and uncompromisable word. And Father, we thank you. We pray that you will anoint me afresh. Let Jesus be glorified and the devil be terrified. We pray, Father, that your word go forth, that it will not return to you, Lord, but it will accomplish the very thing that you sent it forth to do. Father, it's best to be standing before your people. Let not the wrong spirit be protected from this podium, but help me to preach your word out of the spirit of love and meekness and humility. And we be so careful to give you all the praise, the glory, and honor. Anoint me of praise. Grant me revelation of knowledge, spiritual wisdom, and understanding, and discernment. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Let this be a life-changing word. And we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that as your word go forth, that it will break every stronghold. We thank you that the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. And, Father, we praise you and we give you glory. Use me for your glory. I can't do it by yourself. Help me to preach your word. In Jesus' name, we do pray. And we give thanks. And if you're in agreement with that prayer, say, Amen. Amen. Breaking the spirit of poverty. Amen. I want to go back once again. And I know it kind of sound repetitious. But I don't know about nobody else. I got to get the monkey off of my back. Amen. I'm tired of being broke, busted, and disgusted. Amen. How many of y'all in the house love money? Oh, y'all love no money? Y'all like money. I love money. Money is good. Money answers all things. See, y'all get caught up on that scripture. It say the love of money is the root of all evil. It can't be a root of all evil. Depending on how much you do love money. Amen. Some people love money so bad they'll do anything to get some money. Amen. I don't love it that much. Amen. But money answers all things. Amen. And our main focus is not so much about money, but it's talking about basically we're dealing with the seeds and everything that we sow. Amen. Please ask me chapter 10 and 19. It says once again that money answers everything. It said everything. Amen. You can't buy your way into heaven, but it is one of the keys and one of the principles 
amen, to going to heaven, amen, once you get born again, once you get saved. Well, what do you mean by that, Pastor? The Bible says, you're a man wrong God. In matter, Pastor, there ain't no wrongs and no deeds going to heaven, amen. So there's a key principle in everything, amen. It's all talking about the seeds that we sow, we shall also reap seeds. In Genesis 1 and 29, it said, and God said, See, I have given you every herb that ye will see, which is on the face of the earth. In Genesis 8 and 22, he said, While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night, it shall not cease. In other words, everything in life begins by a seed. Amen. Y'all will pray with us, all right. Y'all pray. Everything in life begins with a seed, whether it is spiritual, physical, uh, natural, material, or financial, everything begins with a seed. Even the words that come out of our mouth, they are seeds. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Amen. He said that everything in life begins with a seed. In other words, we got to be careful of the seeds that we sow. Whatever we speak, whatever we greet and talk with people, different things like that, we are sowing seeds in our lives. I told you once we begin, once before. He talks about how life of death is in the tongue. How that even a little child in the womb of a mother, a little child, even in a baby crib, you can speak life of death over that child. We can speak all these demons and different things like that over our children. Your daddy wasn't nothing but a drunk, you ain't gonna be nothing but a drunk. These are seeds that have been sowing into that child's life, and they haven't really been able to get up in life and get to going. And the moment you speak those things out of your mouth, you have released demons from the pits of hell to torment that little child, that little young boy. My God, even though he took to take his first drink. He's struggling with demons, the seed that we sow. You so stupid, you crazy, and all these kind of things. These are seeds that we are sowing into people's lives, even into our children's lives. As we speak, your mama ain't nothing but a whore, and that's all you're going to be. you releasing those whoring demons into your daughter, your child, granddaughter's life. Amen. And they don't even know what's going on. They haven't even had sex yet. And you don't start calling them a whore before they even spirit sex or anything like that. Y'all going to pray with me. That's all right. In other words, everything in life begins with a seed. Even this thing dealing with poverty, we talk about the systems of this world. You got to understand the system is set up, amen, where you're not supposed to succeed, especially when you're dealing with welfare and different things like that. We're dealing with the middle of ways. All these things are seeds, uh, amen. The system, the so called systems of this world. The word poverty. Poverty is a spirit. Let it be no mind. When you are broke, busted, and disgusted all the time, there's a spirit of poverty upon your life. You see it a lot of times in families that you don't understand something. Don't get mad at it. We have to deal with these things. That's the reason why the Bible said, the scripture said, the truth, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We don't want to deal with a lot of issues, especially in our African-American community, because we don't want to offend nobody and different things like that. We're living in poor, low, low neighborhoods and different things like that. A lot of our parents and grandparents didn't go to college or whatever. I, I mean, we got grandparents didn't even pay a whole lot into the system. They iron and done clothes with different people, working in shirt factories, and then when they retired, they ain't been drawn to six, seven hundred dollars a month. And you know, can't nobody live on no six or seven hundred dollars a month. They have to choose between groceries and medicine and all kind of different things like that. This is the so-called systems of our society that we have to deal with. Poverty means being poor. Amen. Having little or uh, no wealth. I know a lot of us, we think talk we got a little money in the bank, but don't let me do it. The Bible always deals with riches and wealth. The little money we got in the bank, we think we're doing good, we think we're doing well. My head's off to you, I thank God for you. But a sickness or anything tragic can happen, can wipe out all of your little money. Yo, come on, y'all talk to that. That's the reason why it's good to be caught up in the system of God. Poor poverty means poor, having little or none or no wealth, few or no possessions, not having enough. 
poverty, the thing that we do, we even teach our children to tell lies when the bill collectors call. When the old phone, we got our own cell phone now. And they call, they call on the cell phone, we got the nice clouds of joy, and all them folk come, come on, y'all come on, that's all right. We got all them singing and everything, we ain't paying our bill, we broke, busted, and disgusted, got bad credit, and all kind of different things like that. And if we tell our children to tell lies for us, we teach them, amen, that when you get grown, amen, you go out and get in a whole lot of debt, get the couch on credit, get the get the kitchen table on credit, the living room suit, the bedroom suit on credit, get the dog on credit, get everything on credit, y'all don't hear me. That's really why a lot of parents got their cell phones in their children's name, using their social security number, because they don't want how they social security number. That's all, let me leave. That's all, let me leave that enough. The word poverty is not having enough. When you working from paycheck, you living and working, living from paycheck to paycheck, you basically have a spirit of poverty. You are poor. That's all right, that's all right, y'all. If you have to live from paycheck to paycheck, you are really living beneath the, the level of poverty in America. And then not having enough. If you miss one paycheck, you something to lose something. Then all the car go back, your house people said, you are poor. Uh, uh, uh. A lack of what is needed. Yeah, we all need help. And, and we don't want to deal with this thing. I, I mean, we got a little car and we got a little house and we got a job and a little money and everything. And we're doing good according to what most people are living in other, other countries or whatever. But here in America right now, if you're living from paycheck to paycheck, then really you are poor. Oh my God. Poverty takes on many precepts. Poverty precepts is a rule of conduct. It's an attitude. It's spiritual brokenness. In other words, poverty, that spirit of poverty, it begins on the inside of a person. In other words, it's your mindset and your attitude. How do you value a dollar? And most of us in here, the reason why we are poor is because of our attitude and our mindset about a dollar. A dollar, how do we value money? In other words, not being good stewards. Stewardship has a lot when you're part of the kingdom of God, when they're dealing with your finances and different things like that, and breaking the spirit of poverty. Poor in spirit. In other words, we ain't got no job, we don't have no peace. Oh, y'all don't hear that. In other words, we're spiritually, socially, economically, financially, we are broke and in poverty. Poverty is a spirit. It ain't no care nothing about how much you shout hallelujah, how much you talk and talk. We still got that spirit of poverty that is on a lot of God's people here in the church. Oh my God. Spiritual brokenness. And it also deals with the soul. The soul is the seed of will and purpose. In other words, you, the seed of appetite is where one reflects his feelings and desires and his emotions are. In other words, poverty is something that starts deep down in an individual's soul. If you live in a home and a house, my God, I know it ain't in the Bible where cleanliness is next to godliness, but when you live in clutter, if someone is living in clutter in their house and clutter all in their yard, there's a sign that something going on on the inside of you that you're cluttered in your soul and in your spirit and in your mind. In other words, your mind is all messed up. It's an unclean spirit. Oh my God. Am I having anybody in the house? <laughs> I, I mean, no, nobody like nastiness when you see people don't wash their dishes and, and don't want to wash clothes and don't keep their room. In other words, we're not talking about anybody. Don't nobody get mad at me. But there's a sign that there's something going on on the inside of me that Jack Daniels and Bud Light and smoking a little bud and a little crack, it ain't going to get rid of that spirit. It just makes matters worse. Oh, my God. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. It's a, it's a mindset. It's an attitude. It, even in your brand new car, you, you got Mickey D French fries over in your car from last week. You paying four, five, six hundred dollars car payment, and you got chicken bones from Kentucky Fried Chicken down behind your seat. It's something wrong with that picture. 
future. It lets me know that there's something going on on the inside of me. I got garbage and clutter on the inside of me. That's all right. Y'all don't pray, but that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. See, you gotta understand something. Sometimes this thing go both ways. Somebody get a new car, and, and we talk about it, they're gonna wash the paint off that car. They keep that car clean all the time. Well, that's a good thing in a way, as long as that car is not their God. Oh uh, I mean, you paying six, seven hundred dollars a month on a car, you ought to be taking care of that car. You ought to keep it clean because cleanliness just ain't gospel now. Cleanliness is next to godliness. In other words, I keep a clean house, I be keep a clean car, I keep a clean behind. That means I'm not gonna I, I refuse to allow my soul and my spirit to get contaminated with all of this club. Oh, that's all right, y'all. Y'all, y'all. As a man thinketh, so is he. That's the Bible right there. If I think broke all the time, then I won't be broke all the time. You ever ask somebody, uh, how you having a good day? It's a good day. Well, what's so good about it? You even know right then that there's something wrong with their mindset. There's something wrong with their attitude. How was your weekend when people talk to me? How was your weekend? How was this and how was that? Anytime you come out a weekend and you still alive, that's a good weekend. Anytime you go from one day, this is the day that the Lord has made, I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Anytime God spare you to see another day, I don't care what kind of pain and ache that you got, it's still a good day. If you're alive and got the right mind, it's still a good day. It's all about our attitude, our mindset. Oh my God. Am I helping anybody? Am I in the house? See, see, it's a mindset. Nobody don't want to work for $7.25. I, I understand that, but if I can get a job making $7.25, and I'm bringing something home that is nothing. Come on, just sitting at home. Uh, they ain't paying me enough. Well, it's a sad thing. You get people who even work in a pop factory. You, you got to start somewhere until you can elevate or get your promotion to something else. $7.25. I, 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 at least I can go there and be productive and, and pay a water bill or a light bill or something. Come on, talk to me. Y'all don't want to talk to me too much. That's all right. I'm keeping it plain and simple because it's still talking about the seed that we sow and breaking the spirit. It's foolish to sit at home and not do nothing because ain't nobody paying enough. And you sit at home and ain't getting no government check, ain't nothing coming in the mail. That's a silly, that's a crazy mindset. Something wrong with that attitude. Something is better than nothing. Oh my God. Oh, oh my God. Poverty is, is a spirit. And we got to get that monkey off, off our back. He said, cast all your cares upon the Lord for he cares for you. In other words, money just ain't going to rain down out of heaven. You got to have a mindset and an attitude to want to work. God rewards hard work. We got a lot of folks don't want to work. Uh, 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 you, 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 people, you say work is like a, you know, cut somebody out. Come on, come on, y'all talk to me. That, 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 that's all right. I, I, I get to jump around like that because I get excited. Uh, I mean, that word poverty is it, something that begins on the inside and it manifests itself on the outside. You need to always remember that a, a nasty, filthy house. And, and I, come on, it's a mindset, it's an attitude. When you don't want to clean your behind, it's something going on in your soul and realm. When you don't want to wash your behind, come on, it's a something. Um, somebody just always tell me, ain't nothing no worse than a ragged mouth preacher with bad breath trying to tell you something about Jesus. Personal hygiene is very important. It's a mindset. Yeah, I'm going there because, see, when I ain't taking care of myself and upkeeping myself, that means there's something going on the inside of my soul where I got low self-esteem. Uh, I just don't care no more. Uh, people always talk about my age. My, yeah, I'm, I'm getting on up in the age, but because you're getting old on me, you got to let yourself go. You can let yourself go if you want to, but whatever it takes, Johnny going to keep on looking good even when y'all visit me and I'm laid out in the coffin. It don't make no sense. I ain't never seen nobody dead look good, but y'all can still see he look sure look, look good. <laughs> I gotta let this alone. <laughs> it's the seed of will and purpose. You gotta wanna do better. And, and you got every penny counts. Every dollar that you get, it counts. It means something. Most of us, when we get paid every week, we can't even know what. We don't even know what half of our paycheck went to. That because 
because of poor stewardship, the bad stewardship. Stewardship means we're going to have a class on stewardship. Me, you ought to be the top of every quarter, every nickel that you got paid. That's what good stewardship is all about. We just don't know. We go to Walmart, eBay, whatever. We just spend, 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 and we pay everybody and pay everybody but God. Come on, talk to me now. We don't want to pay him out Why we still broke, busted, and disgusted. It's a mindset. It's the way one thinks. His attitude about money. Do you value a dollar? How do you value money? Oh, come on, talk to me. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And there have been times in my life when I had a job and I was drawing unemployment. I've done better when I was drawing unemployment than I was when I had a job. And the reason why, because when I had unemployment, I know I had a limited amount of income and I had to guard everything that I had. Oh, y'all talk to me. Oh, my God. <laughs> See, there's something going on in that soulless realm. It's a soulless problem. That's, that's what it is. It, it, a so-called spiritual brokenness. A lot of God's people, the, he, he said, now, I pray that John, he said, I pray that you prosper in all things and be in good health, even as your soul prosper. See, it's a soulless thing. We when you holler prosperity, the first thing people think about is money. Prosperity is more than just money. It, it, it means joy, having joy and love and peace and happiness, being able to enjoy your prosperity. It all begins with the soul. And I know y'all the, 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 the keep thinking I'm preaching the same thing over and over. And I question God about it as well. And he said, stay right there. Because that's what it all. Even on last Sunday, we talked about some things and some people kind of got upset. But I had somebody say, I ain't coming up on it, but I'm going to send my tithe by him. That let me know my preaching is not in vain. Somebody listening to what's going on because this ain't my church. This is your church. And the church ain't no better than the members of people that's in the church. We are all obligated to help take care of this house. If this is God's house, it ain't not my house. It's God's house. And I'm decreeing the care that in this house, Jesus is Lord in this house. Every church ain't God's house. But in this house, this is God's house. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Let me move on. Proverbs 6, 6, 11, he talks about the slugger that being lazy and how God rewards hard work. Ecclesiastes 11, 1 and 2, he said, cast your bread upon the water. Be back to your seeds now that you're sowing. Cast your bread upon the waters and you will find it after many days. Give a servant to seven and also to eight, but you do not know what evil will be on the earth. He talks about sowing and reaping. Be careful of the seed that you sow. In other words, God is a good God. You got to be careful of the seed that you sow. See, God, people, we don't want to sow. We sow tight and stingy to be sweet when we walk. Come on, talk to me. Y'all don't hear me. You know, I told you about my story and, and the devil. I, I, God blessed me with 20 and the devil robbed me of 20. And when I got the other 20, I pulled it right back into the house of God because, and yet the devil messed with my mind. You should have kept But yeah, still, I'm still alive. I got my help and strength. And I told God what he would do. And I sowed the seed. And I'm believing God that he's going to restore everything because I sowed that seed. And he said, in many days, in many days. Day. Come on, talk to me. I don't know how many days, but I ain't got no more sense than the trust of God. That God going to do just what he said he would do. After all this God's anyway, Amen. everything you got belongs to God. Amen. The earth is the Lord's and the food is there. When you leave this world, my brothers and sisters, I ain't see no you haul Ain't nothing going in there. Naked you come in this world, naked you gonna leave. And all your children and grandchildren gonna fight over what you got. They may not fight. They may be all gonna fight about who's gonna pay the bill to put your behind away. Cause you ain't got no insurance. That's all right. Oh, that's all right. Oh my God. I need to let that alone. He said, I first kept something Corinthians 9 and 6, and I'm moving on. He said, I say, he who sold sparingly 
will also reach better, and he who sowed bountifully will also reap bountifully. Amen. See, we, we are real skeptical about giving when we come into church. See, we don't really have to understand the principle that when you do something, it don't make no difference what the people that you give it to, what they do with it. Only thing you do is obey and do what God's word tells you to do. Amen. If you sow sparingly, you sow reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you shall reap bountifully. It's just like going out sowing seeds in the garden, sad seeds. You got to throw them seeds. If you want corn, you plant corn. If you want beans, you plant beans. We ain't. If you want money, you sow some money. Sow some soup. Sow some dresses. Sow some shoes you know you can't wear. You bought them shoes, they're too small. You still trying to wear them and your feet be hurt. You got to soak your feet in some hot water every time you wear Keep giving away to somebody. Y'all don't have that's, that's all right. That's all right. In other words, it's, just, it's about what you sow. You sow sparingly, you shall reap sparingly. You sow bountifully, you shall reap bountifully. I believe in sowing and sowing seeds. You can't give everything that you got away. It don't belong to you, no, but when God bless you and he bless you, he bless you in order that you might be a blessing. Dude, people don't understand that. About that, 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 that first of all, y'all don't have it. It's just like the man that had the bars. He, he said, I, I done so so good, I'm gonna feel me more boy. Look at what I have done. God always had a people problem with people that always brag and boast on themselves. Look at what I got. That's the reason why the children of Israel they stayed in the wilderness so long and they went a long way to get to the promised land. God said, I led you this way so you wouldn't get caught up in yourself. Talking about, look what I done, but I give you power to attain wealth. Y'all don't hear me. I'm trying to help somebody. He said, Look at that. I'm gonna build more. Oh boys, and then that same night, God said, you fool, this night your soul shall be required of thee. Because you don't understand, it's because I'm the one that blessed you. You are blessed to be a blessing. That's what the promises of Abraham is all about. God blessed Abraham in order that Abraham might be a blessing. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. See, the reason why we don't do no more what we do when it comes down to giving and so on is because we really don't trust God. We trust that dollar bill, but we don't trust God. The God that that dollar in heaven. Yeah, we don't trust God. Am I helping anybody? Yeah. James chapter 4, he said, you lust. Verse number 2, write that down now. We still be going different ways spiritually uh, and, and, and financially. James chapter 4, verse 2, he said, you lust and do not have. You murder and cover and cannot obtain. This is another reason why we don't got no money. You fight in war and yet you do not have because you do not ask. Verse number three says you ask and do not receive because you ask to miss that you may spend it on your own pleasure. Check what's saying now. Adulterers and adulterers, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God and whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. You see what he's saying? See, a lot of times we don't get it, and we still broke because we don't want to do we don't we don't really want to be blessed to be a blessing to the kingdom we want to be a blessing so we can say look what i got look who i am come on talk to me now so so we can ride around and be cool and sit up in our big fine houses and, and, and boast and brag about what we got what we done done and come on talk to me and talk about how god done blessed us but really, in reality, you bragging and boasting about what you done doing, how you done bless yourself. Y'all don't have it. That's all right. Matthew 6 and 24, he said, No one can serve two masters, but either will he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. This is another reason why a lot of God's people are still in poverty. Come on, talk to me now, y'all. That's all right. Because we got this, he said, you cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is the object of your worship. Huh? Oh, my God. Right, he said, you cannot serve God and master. No man can serve two masters. Either you're going to hate the one or, or you're going to love the one or hate the other or you're going to be loyal to the one and despise the other. This is another reason why the spirit of poverty is so prevalent, pre prevalent in so many of God's people's lives. Because we have set that God mammon, y'all come on talking, up on a pedestal and we'll do anything for a dollar. Y'all 
In other words, that dollar, that money is the object of our worship. And we wonder why we can work two or three jobs and it looks like we just can't get ahead. We can call folks and all kind of different things like that. And it looks like I just can't get my breakthrough. I, it looks like I just can't make nothing happen for myself. It's because we do not love God the way we say we do with all our heart, all our soul, and our mind. But we love that money. And when he says the talks about Mount Mammon, in other words, it is the object of our worship. No one can serve two masters. But either we will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. The root spirit of mamma is a strong man. Uh-huh. He's a strong man. In other words, that spirit of mamma, he has to be cushy. This is the thing why we stand so much on this thing about the spirit of poverty. And every second on ain't got a new message. Because, see, you got to understand something. God is trying to uproot some things. The spirit of poverty, it's got to be uprooted. You just can't cut the branches and prune that spirit. you got to uproot any kind of demonic spirit so that thing will not have any kind of put you in bondage anymore. Yeah. Oh, my God. See, we play around too much in the church. We really ain't dealing with demons and devils like we need to, like we should. And we talk about, we got all this Holy Ghost and talking in tongues and everything else. But yet still, our people in bondage. Nobody in this house should be in a spirit of poverty. Come on, talk to me now. If we say we pay our time, if we do what God tells us to do, we ought to be prospering in all things and be in good health, even as our soul prospers. The word is going forth. What are you doing with the word? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Amen. Proverbs 13 18, he said, Poverty and shame huh, will be to who, who disdains correction. But he who regards a 